The confirmed number of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 238,458. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 5,732. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 1,279, with total confirmed deaths remaining at 64. We anticipate those numbers to increase as the county updates its last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Rhiannon Trutanich. It's 2 p.m. on Saturday, August 29th. We may have some definitive answers by the end of the year whether potential COVID-19 vaccines are working. Officials with Operation Warp Speed said while the public-private partnership will not cut corners, it may not take long to tell if one or more of the vaccines are working. Paul Mango, the Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy at the Department of Health Human Services, says the vaccines are on track and should be ready by 2021. Currently, there are six vaccine candidates with two already in phase three clinical trials and four more to head that way by the middle of September. The Data Safety Monitoring Board, which is an independent body that is assigned to each clinical trial, works to ensure the safety and welfare of people who participate in it, as well as the validity and integrity of the data. Health officials say potential COVID-19 vaccine trials are on track, if not a bit ahead. More than 30,000 volunteers have been enrolled in two major COVID-19 vaccine trials. The two manufacturers, Moderna and Pfizer, hope to enroll 60,000 volunteers for their phase three trials and are halfway there. AstraZeneca, in partnership with the UK's University of Oxford, has also begun phase three trials on its COVID-19 vaccine with study sites in the U.S. The Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy, Paul Mango, cautions there are no guarantees in science and is always possible that the vaccines being tested will not be effective. Experts say one vaccine will not be enough to meet the anticipated demand as some may suit certain populations better than others, such as seniors or those with compromised immune systems, as well as young children. Now, this next step, phase three, should help answer those questions on which demographic the vaccines are finding success in. Mango says officials feel very good about the diversity and enrollment for the trials. Half the study participants will receive the vaccine and the other half will get a placebo. In the meantime, health officials remind the public until a vaccine is ready, people should follow the simple guidelines of wearing masks, physical distancing, and keeping up on good hygiene to protect against the virus. New guidelines released by California Governor Gavin Newsom yesterday included new strategies and modifications on how counties will be able to reopen various sectors again, providing more stringent guidance to ensure the public's safety and health. The four-tiered color-coded system ranks counties based on the number of virus, uh, virus cases and infection rates. Businesses will be allowed to add more customers or open more services as their county moves into lower tiers. The four tiers starting at the top are purple, then red, orange, and finally yellow, the lowest risk. When the new system takes effect, 38 of the state's 58 counties, including Los Angeles, will begin at purple with the most restrictions, and only three rural counties will begin in the yellow tier, the least restrictive. In response, Los Angeles County public health officials say the local health orders have not changed and will remain in place until officials and the Board of Supervisors have an opportunity to review the suggested guidance from the state and take appropriate action. This means hair salons, barber shops, and indoor shopping centers will need to continue operating outdoors with proper permits until an updated order is released. The state's revised system authorizes the county to allow the reopening of certain indoor businesses and the reopening of malls at 25 percent capacity beginning Monday if the county chooses to. You can stay updated on the latest COVID-19 public health orders as well as the COVID-19 dashboard and resources at publichealth.lacounty.gov. Three more children in Los Angeles County were diagnosed with a rare and potentially deadly inflammatory syndrome believed to be linked to COVID-19. 
It's called MISC, which stands for Multisystem Inflammatory Syndrome. And now a total of 28 children have been confirmed to have this by the county's public health department. MISC causes inflammation in various parts of the body, including the heart, lungs, kidneys, brain, eyes, skin, and gastrointestinal organs. Health officials say it can carry lifelong health impacts. Officials at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say most patients develop the sickness within a month of being infected with the coronavirus. County officials say 28% of those who are identified with the illness are 5 years old or younger. 39% are between 6 and 12 years old and 32% are 13 to 20 years old. Parents should contact their doctor immediately if their child shows symptoms of MISC, which can include fever, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, neck pain, rash, bloodshot eyes, and fatigue. Health officials are raising concerns about an antibiotic-resistant germs called superbugs. As the coronavirus weakens patients' immune systems, a secondary illness like pneumonia are forcing doctors to increase the use of antibiotics for these bacterial infections. It's also due to the overuse and certain ingredients in hand sanitizer that are raising alarm in the medical community. Health officials say not to take antibiotics unless absolutely necessary so that when you do need them, they're effective. And be sure to check your hand sanitizer and look for the ingredient triclosan, which can increase superbugs. These, this ingredient should not be included. While it's banned in the U.S., it has recently turned up in sanitizer and hand soaps sold online. California Governor Gavin Newsom signed into law a new bill that will ban the sale of most flavored tobacco products in the state beginning January 1st. SB 793, which was passed unanimously by the state Senate, was designed to help deter children from wanting to try smoking. Beginning the new year, it will be a crime to sell tobacco products with flavors such as fruit, chocolate, candy, desserts, alcoholic beverages, or menthol. While it's not a crime to possess those products, retailers will be fined up to $250 if caught selling it. Advocates say the products are still too easy for teens to get their hands on, even though it is illegal for retailers to sell tobacco to anyone under 21. Critics such as e-cigarette producers argue that their products help wean smokers from cigarettes and a ban would also harm merchants. The ban was supported by the American Cancer Society, American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, and the organization Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. Black Panther actor and rising star Chadwick Boseman lost his battle to colon cancer last night. Boseman, who was only 43, made global impacts in his role in the Marvel blockbuster movie franchise Black Panther, as well as in his roles playing Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, and James Brown. Bozeman was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer in 2016 and battled with it as it progressed to stage 4. Bozeman filmed seven popular films, all while undergoing surgeries and chemotherapy. According to a statement released by Bozeman's family, the South Carolina native died in his Los Angeles home, surrounded by his wife and family. Bozeman's death took many fans by surprise and prompted an outpour of grief and support, many taking to social media. Oprah Winfrey tweeted, What a gentle, gifted soul, showing us all that greatness in between surgeries and chemo. The courage, the strength, the power it takes to do that. This is what dignity looks like. Former President Barack Obama shared about his visit with Bozeman when he took on the role of Jackie Robinson and came to the White House to work with kids. He says, you could tell right away that he was blessed to be young, gifted, and black, to use that power, to give them heroes to look up to, to do it all while in pain, what a use of his years. The MLB tweeted, we are devastated by the tragic loss of Chadwick Bozeman. His transcendent performance in 42 will stand the test of time and serve as a powerful vehicle to tell Jackie's story to audiences for generations to come. The Indiana Pacers wrote, rest in power, Chadwick Bozeman. 
Bozeman, who was a regular at LA Laker games, was honored by players, including LeBron James, who posted Rest in Paradise King. As the basketball community also mourns in the loss of actor Chadwick Boseman, they return to the courts this afternoon to continue with NBA playoffs after Wednesday's postponement. The National Basketball Association and the National Basketball Players Association released a joint statement last night detailing a renewed commitment by the league. Players and team representatives of all 13 teams in Orlando agreed to resume NBA playoff games today after discussions and agreement of providing a platform to promote social justice and creating an NBA foundation focused on economic empowerment in the black community, as well as bringing awareness to the importance of civic engagement in national and local elections. The playoffs were suspended when the Milwaukee Bucks decided to boycott their playoff game against the Orlando Magic in response to the police shooting of Jacob Blake, a 29-year-old black man in Wisconsin. The decision created a ripple effect throughout the sports world as the NBA canceled the rest of Wednesday's games, and multiple athletes and teams from other leagues followed suit, including the LA Lakers. Games resume today with the Orlando Magic versus Milwaukee Bucks this afternoon, then Oklahoma City Thunder will play against the Houston Rockets at 6.30 p.m. and the Portland Trailblazers versus the Los Angeles Lakers at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. A peach recall that was first announced weeks ago is now expanding as more cases of illnesses are reported. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said peach products linked to salmonella poisoning is rising with now 78 reported cases across 12 states, including California. The tainted fruit sold between June 29th and August 3rd was shipped to retailers in more than 30 states by California-based Wawona Packing Company. More than a dozen stores have recalled the peaches, including Aldi, Kroger, Target, and Walmart. Bagged peaches, loose fruit, and peaches in bulk, along with peach salsa sold under various brand names and labeled as perfectly peach salsa, are all being recalled. The CDC suggests cleaning and sanitizing any surfaces the peaches may have come into contact with to prevent cross-contamination, such as cutting boards, slicers, knives, countertops, refrigerators, and storage bins. As airlines, hotels, and cruises have taken some of the biggest hits during what would be their busy summer season due to the pandemic, it seems one industry is booming. Personal transportation, such as recreational vehicles, bicycles, and boats, are seeing an overwhelming response as alternative ways to travel this year. Boat sales from personal watercrafts to yachts were the highest in decade in May, I'm sorry, the highest in demand in decades in May and June. According to the National Marine Manufacturers Association, close to 115,000 new powerboats were sold in the months of May and June, which represents a 30% increase from the same time last year. Boat slips are also in high demand. Destinations such as Catalina Island saw higher demand in July than the same time a year ago. Marina Del Rey yacht sales also reported about 11 boat sales this last month, up from the usual two or three. Ironically, just two months ago into the new year, manufacturers of recreational vehicles had talks of shutting down production lines and laying off workers due to the poor demand. This was all before the pandemic. Now, according to Arvia, the industry trade organization that tracks RV production for the industry, says May was one of their busiest months at RV dealers across the country. Sales are now outpacing supplies of new units. You may have noticed gas prices at the pump are slowly rising, but experts say it's likely to stay consistent without any sudden spikes. According to the Automobile Club of Southern California, it's now one cent more than a week ago and five cents higher than a month ago, but 34 cents less than one year ago. The average prices of a gallon of self-serve regular gasoline in Los Angeles County is 321, the highest since the start of the health crisis. According to GasBuddy.com, the cheapest gas in Torrance today is at Costco on Lomita Avenue at 2.79 a gallon. Next was Arco on Sepulveda, just west of Hawthorne Boulevard at $2.85 a gallon. According to the head of petroleum analysis at GasBuddy.com, gasoline prices have seen little movement during the summer, probably the most stable in at least 10 to 15 years. 
You can check out where the cheapest gas prices are downloading the app Gas Buddy or going to their website. The outdoor shopping experience at Delamo Fashion Center will be around for a little while longer. Delamo Fashion Center officials say it will continue throughout the weekend until at least the end of September. The outdoor marketplace open in the outdoor village from 1 to 5 p.m. Various retailers from inside the mall have set up outdoor booths to offer their products to the public. Brands including Pandora, Macy's, Uniqlo USA, Cotton On, Travis Matthew, Skechers, and Kate Spade, New York, to name a few. You can also find a number of restaurants on site offering al fresco dining, along with the mall food court and Mitsua Japanese Market, also open for takeout. Follow them on social media for the latest or go to simon.com slash Delamo Fashion Center. As families kicked off the new school year with distance learning this week, we want to hear how it went for you and your kids. As families navigate through this difficult time and unique learning models, we'd love to hear tips or suggestions that you might have that other families could find useful. Now, whether you have a preschooler or a teen in high school and every grade in between, we want to hear from you. And parents working from home, managing distance learning for your kids, and making personal and professional adjustments, share with us what seemed to work this first week of school as we're all in this together. Email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community, feel good pictures, images, and videos that reminds us all of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Well, if you've been inside the Torrance Bakery lately, you may notice a drawing hanging on their wall that resembles the iconic local favorite. Well, it's the artwork of local student Hannah Shafaroff, who turned her full-blown love affair for the bakery into a classroom assignment. This is part of her travel log assignment, where she was tasked to choose a special place and create a series of illustrations that highlight what she loves about that place, and she chose the Torrance Bakery. The bakery has since commissioned Hannah to create several more of her watercolor and colored pencil drawings that are now featured inside the store. And many of those have been made into greeting cards, which can be found at the Torrance Bakery as well. Hannah is currently working towards her BFA in illustration at Cal State University, Long Beach. You can follow her at that gal who draws on Instagram. What a great way to showcase one of the many places in the city that makes Torrance so unique and special. Thanks so much, Hannah. Now, if you have a great story to share, be sure to email us. We'd love to hear from you. That's our update for COVID-19 today. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow at 2 p.m. as Christine Lee brings you the latest updates. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.